Jutla is a, a small town. You know everybody here. You know all the business, and even if you take a taxi, you know the taxi driver. When I was growing, I always imagined having a really strong roots. Like having my house and my own business and be part of my community. And I imagine myself living in Cojutla. I met James in Cuernavaca when I was studying political science. really hard for me at first because, well, I have a, a huge community here. So Fernanda had stayed back to finish a loan application for a small business, and I had zipped over to Canada to do some work there. But we were eventually going to be in Canada together. And then the earthquake happened. Silly things. I remember talking. I was uh, talking with James, and then I remember I feel like I, I don't know, like the table moving, and then the people started screaming like bad. I was walking with my brother to go for lunch, and then uh, the pictures came, and then I just remember stopping. By the looks of the pictures, it looks like just total massacre. Like, can I call you? And she said, said the phones were down. And I just remember just like a thousand questions popping up in my head. Like, are her, all her friends alive? Is her family alive? There was my kindergarten, my elementary school, high school. So I knew everybody there. And then they lose their houses and people die. And I was there with my white shirt and no, nothing happened to me, nothing. At that moment, I just think, I'm so happy James is in Canada. At that moment, it's like we was in a war. So the day of the earthquake, all businesses shut down, but Fernanda and her family just started giving out free sandwiches. So that's how it started. Since they had already been organizing food and water, they kind of elected Fernanda to be in charge of the semi-truck of supplies. So then from there, it just it kind of kick-started in her having their own aid center. I was like a ghost for my family and James and my friends, even my friends. I stopped talking with them for a long time. So yeah, I, I think I sacrificed a lot. I stay in Jojutla for one year after the earthquake because I want to continue helping. I know. 
before the earthquake, I, I was always happy. It's like I always see a problem and I always say, oh, don't worry, we can work in that. And now I always feel like we are in that constant emotion of emergency. That you have to do something, something, always. And even when I'm home, and I, it's hard for me to sleep. But still there are a lot of people that don't have anything. Angelica! Angelica! ¿Cómo estás? Sí, gracias. Sí. Uh, esta era nuestra casa. Um, les llegaba hasta acá. Todo esto se nos, se nos vino encima. Uy. Pues es que estábamos este, mis dos hijos, mi hermana y yo, dentro de la casa cuando pasó el temblor. Y uh, pues ya no logramos salir más que hasta la entrada de la puerta y, y nos cayó toda la casa encima. Y pues desgraciadamente um, falleció mi, mi, mi niño y mi hermano uh -huh. en, en, en ese momento. Y nada más mi, mi pequeña y yo logramos salir con vida. Entonces, ah, okay. no. <laughs> And we lose 20 schools, some hospitals. And houses like this, we have a lot. We still have like hundreds of families living in this situation. Because our government say they don't have enough money. because they want to steal all the money. So what they do is they change the price of everything. They say, oh, okay, we make this new school and cost 10 millions, and they probably just invest 2 millions. And they say, we use the best quality of materials, but they use the worst. And then something like the earthquake happened, and that costs lives. Todos nosotros estamos convencidos we start seeing all this injustice and how our politics are. And then I think there is where I change. Carlos, Carlos, he's my friend from like a long, long time. And he was activist in Mexico City. We start like sharing experience. Everybody was agreed, like, our government is a shh. And we have to do something to change that. I remember, like, driving, and I called my mom, and I said, Mom, I was talking with Carlos, and I said, he should run, right? And my mom said, yes, he's going to be awesome, because he's the most honest person I know. Everything happened, and say, Carlos, if you run, I'm going to be with you full commitment. Since the earthquake, we've been, or I've been back and forth to Canada, so it's been like two months together, a month or two apart. Just like any relationship, it's just hard. Distance is hard. Personally, I wouldn't have changed anything. I think a lot of times I am more proud of her than she is proud of herself. She was there when it mattered. La verdad, cuando ella nos comenta a nosotros, la verdad no estuvimos de acuerdo. ¿Por qué? Porque nosotros 
no como cocutlenses, sino como mexicanos, sabemos que el sistema en México está muy viciado. Es un sistema muy sucio, es un sistema muy corrupto, muy corrupto, es un sistema de mucha desigualdad y de mucha inseguridad. Jutla es un pequeño municipio en average en México. But it's very special because it combines so many tragedies at the same time. The tragedies of being uh, shaken and destroyed by an earthquake, and at the same time, you have mass graves with full bodies uh, that are product of violence, not only from drug cartels, but authorities that work in organized crime as well. Morelos is the second state with more women get killed. Before you say, oh, maybe something the cartels, but no, it's just, they have hate. They are like hate crimes. Every day you wake up with that news. Entonces, yo como madre, era el temor. Esta familia ha sido muy azotada por la inseguridad. En esta casa ya supimos lo que es secuestro, lo que es que nos asalten. Y mi esposo ha recibido, él ha sido atracado cuatro veces en su vida. I just read it this morning. There's there been like 44 assassinations in Mexico. Yeah, like 100 and some, right? And 44 candidates, that's what it was. So they hear news like that too, and they ask me, is it dangerous? I honestly don't really know what to say. I think it is somewhat dangerous. I take care of myself. I'm really careful. I know I spend a lot of money in gas, but I prefer to drive my car to just walk at night. And I feel that I working with Carlos make James feel really relieved because Carlos, he knows a lot about security. What Carlos always says is though, we can't be afraid. It's like if you're, if you're walking in, into dark space as a child, then what do you do? You walk in as a group, holding each other's hand. But you can't, can't be afraid. I remember when I said, I'm gonna run, my dad was so upset. He was like, why are you doing this? Why you don't go to Canada, be with your husband, don't be selfish. James is alone and he needs you and I was like, well, I feel like in this moment, Jojutla need me more. This is going to be the biggest elections in all our history. So yeah, it's going to be a really long day. Uh, we start really early. We have to find one person for every polling station. So there are uh, 78. It's hard to find people who wants to do that for free. Candidata. Ah, mi hijo le te presento a Don Guillermo. Hola, mucho gusto. Perdone. Sí, no. El. ¿Qué? Platicar con ellos. Con los votantes, no, no puedes. Ah, es, es que es mi padrino, incluso. No importa. Me pidieron una foto también. 
So the campaign's been kind of actually nerve-wracking because every time we deliver food to our observers, we take a picture of them to send to our security in case anything goes down. Like if one party feels that another party's really strong in a certain booth, they'll try to disrupt that booth to scare people from going there to vote. Buenas noches. Con permiso. ¿Esto qué es? Ah, no, esto es de gobernatura. ¿En dónde están? Three years ago, in the last election, the problems always come when people finish voting because everybody start counting the votes. Ay, Eliud, eres una santa, te lo juro. Ah, ya te tocaron las abajo. In another place where they was counting votes, somebody who come there stole the polling station and hit the people who was counting the votes. during the campaign was crazy, 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 crazy. And then I feel, one day I feel like I don't have anything more to give away. I, I feel like I was empty. And then I went to Canada and start feeling like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm charging my, my batteries. I think it was July or August we came back because the election was done and we had a break from then until January. So we figured we'd come here and, and see family and that way I could work and make some money. So the plan now, and it never goes as planned, but is to just permanently be in Mexico. Um, for sure for three years, which is how long uh, Fernandez's term will be. Keep track of whatever you spend this Christmas season on trees and gifts and wine and eggnog and add it all up and at the end of the season, double it. And Make an equal contribution to a cause of your own choice. Put some money in Fernanda's back pocket so she can take it back to Mexico and do some good in Uudla with it. I think we have a calling. We are going to be in charge to raise this town who lose everything. It's not just any job. We won a seat in the city council, and Carlos is the city councillor, and we get four commissions. And I'm working every day in transparency, privacy, and the corruption. We probably don't change Hohutla, but 
we notice right now we are winning small battles. Señora, este, Leti, ¿qué tipo de daño tuvo su casa? Solamente se cayeron dos ventanas y la parte de arriba, lo, las, los muros están en completa X. El día de hoy va a haber sesión de cabildo abierta. Es la primera que se hace aquí en el municipio. Así que si usted quiere acercarse, si tiene dudas, sugerencias o, o, o quejas, puede acompañarnos. No quiero estar arrimado. Tengo poco tiempo, dos meses de arrimado, pero yo quiero regresar a mi casa. Eh, realmente también hay muchos peligros de acceso de gente desocupada, gente con otras costumbres de vivir de lo ajeno. Y realmente, pues yo, yo considero que también ahí hay muchos peligros. Eh, no hay luz. Señor presidente, yo pienso que son muchos los problemas. No nos hemos repuesto. I like to feel like, okay, I'm in control of my emotions. I don't know, I'm having a great day and then somebody does something so stupid or this guy is doing bad in this city council, he's trying to steal money or whatever. And I feel so angry at that moment. It's like, whoa, that's, that's not healthy. It's not healthy. Señora, ahí está. Pásele. Mire. She's good at being the help, the face of hope, but it tears you down after a while, and so it's hard. Even today, when people go to her for help, she she always needs to be the savior. I think that you have like a, a hard limit of what you can do against corruption. That hard limit is if you are not corrupt, you're gonna get killed. Below that, everything is a fact of will. You have the choice all the time and, and every day. You know, don't accept this. Don't, don't promise that. Don't fall that way. My life now is just my work. Hola. Hola, Adri. And I feel like, well, James is what kind of life he has in Jojutla. It's not safe for him. So sometimes he wants to go out and I start getting really anxious. I don't like how I am here. I start feeling like I'm really freak, like control freak with him. So he say, oh, I want to go to this bar. This guy invite me. And it's like, no, James, you don't know him. Maybe, well, a lot of people here is in the drug business. It's not fair for James. It's hard to get an idea of what's happening here because I think people here have become accustomed to it, too. Like, living in a small town like this to begin with is hard. It's hard uh, for me. I'm not used to it, but it's hard on everyone here. There's murders that happen, all the corruption, girls and women being abducted. It, it gets old. <laughs> it's, it's so sad. And now she's in government and she's doing things on like a more legislative level, which is also just so important. But it sounds like we might go in a different direction from here. We might move to either Canada or even Jalisco. And then maybe we'll come back, who knows? It's 
she needs to breathe and take care of herself now instead of everyone else. Oh, we're making another good start. <laughs> These last weeks, I'm trying so hard to figure out what I want to do. Because I know, I know myself so well that if I decide to live here without being sure, I'm going to be feeling guilty. I feel like I'm not stable anymore. That's the truth. I start taking pills for anxiety, and I don't like that. I feel, oh, I want to do this. Uh, I don't know, I want to accomplish this in, our, in the city council. But then, again, I think, well, what I have to sacrifice more? If Carlos run again, and the guys run again, and they ask me to come and support them, Without any question, I probably came back. I think I never going to stop trying to help, but I don't want to be so innocent to say we can change everything and everything's going to be all right. I can walk every night at the streets without any concern, no, because it's, that's not the truth. We are going to continue working to helping people that wants to have a better life. We are not going to stop with that, but I'm not naive anymore.